Good morning, day 141, cooking down the freezer, refrigerator, and working pantry, still at it, cooking these things down to save money to buy other things. So we have to be smart nowadays when it comes to buying food. At least for now, the days are gone where we can just go to the store and buy anything and everything we want. At least that's true for those of us on a fixed income. And that just doesn't mean older folks. That means younger folks with families that can't spend the time to have two or three jobs because we have kids to look after and other things to do, houses to maintain and gardening to do. So many, many of us are in that boat where we don't have a whole lot of discretionary income to buy a lot of extra things. So the best place to do that is with our food. And that doesn't mean we have to go around starving. We just have to be smart about buying food and shopping in a way that we can have food available at all times in our lager. So anyway, that's sort of what this series is about. Uh, I'm helping myself and I'm trying to help others to be more conscientious about how you buy food, how you cook food, how you spend money on food. And I'm learning that it can be done. And I'm not talking about buying junk food. I'm talking about buying good, healthy food that will sustain you and keep you healthy. Anyway, that's my goal. I hope I'm achieving it. And I hope that some of you will leave some comments below and help the rest of us to um, share good ideas on how we can get through this uh, period of unrest and difficulty uh, in our country. All right, well, this morning I have to take my mom for an appointment, so breakfast won't be real fancy. I already know what I'm going to have, and I'm going to keep it simple this morning because I have to go pick her up. All right, I will be back with breakfast in just a short while, and we'll see what's cooking in Ellen's kitchen. Good morning. Cheers. Here's to a happy day. A healthy day, a good day. Well, here it's still chilly and raining, only in the 50s. I did put my little tomato plants out, um, and then last night I ended up closing up my little tiny greenhouses because we had storm warnings and there were tornadoes um, in a different county, but that storm was heading our way. But we just ended up with thunderstorms. So everybody's good, everybody's safe. Um, it wasn't as bad. So do you ever notice how when the weather's bad or going to be bad, they really, really sensationalize it. Like, oh, we're going to have a snowstorm, and they go on and on about it. It's almost like the chicken little thing. You know, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. And then um, it's never as bad as it is. The, the problem with that is a lot of times when there really is an emergency coming your way, you just kind of start to think, ah, oh, you know, they're just overdoing it and reporting things that won't happen. But it's, um, I don't think that's a good thing, you know, that they s sensationalize everything and, and everything's over the top nowadays, everything. But anyway, um, we still have to be mindful and be careful if there's weather warnings, you know, uh, do your due diligence and look and see, you know, follow the weather app and see what's happening. Because uh, we don't want to lose anybody on this channel, do we? So I just thought I'd pop on here real quick 
Oh, that first cup of coffee is always the best. And just make a, a quick little chat video here. And uh, before I have to take my mom to her appointment, um, you know, at 93, she needs some help. She needs some help with appointments, and she needs some help getting, getting to places that are farther away from her home. <clears throat> she, um, she tools around the neighborhood in her little car. Um, she'll go, you know, like half a mile to Mark's, and she's fortunate that she has a grocery store, a uh, couple of them within her little area there. And she really doesn't wander very far from home, so I feel that she's still safe to drive. And you don't want to take away um, a person's independence unless they're a harm to themselves or to others. Then it's justified. But, um, yeah, she's still driving and doing great, maintaining her own home. And it's a big home. She has a big yard, and... Uh, she takes care of it herself. Wow, this is a crazy hairdo. I haven't even combed my hair this morning. <clears throat> I wanted to talk a little bit about happiness and making your life pleasant, especially nowadays where everything's in such turmoil. All you hear is bad news and everything's, like I said, everything is over the top everything except good news. The good news is like in the back seat. So I think it's very important that we create our own happiness whether that's in your relationships or in your home, um, in your yard, wherever it is. And if you find it's difficult to do that, start off with baby steps. You know, once a day, um, if you if you have that guilt thing going on in your head, that I should, I should, I should do this, I should do that. Um, you got that little person that's your conscience sitting on your shoulder, which really doesn't exist. You know, I mean, those are things from childhood that that you know you were taught. If you were kind of a slow mover, always, you know, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. And you kind of get that, I gotta hurry up, I gotta hurry up. But you don't really have to. You know, I, I do that myself. I don't know. I've always been sort of a laid back person. Um, I'm not a speedy Gonzales. I never have been, even though I did very well in my career. I raised three children as a single mom. When I look back on my life, I've accomplished a lot, and I'm proud of what I've accomplished. My kids are great, um, but, you know, you still have that critic wherever it comes from. I don't know, not pointing the finger at anything or anybody. You still have that critic that sits on your shoulder telling you what to do. So you got to push him off your shoulder and say, you know, you're just not real. You're, you're just annoying and, and uh, give it a face of somebody that you really don't like much and then just kick them to the curb. You know, give them what's for. If you need to swear at them, go ahead and just to leave you alone. And then every day do some things that make you happy. Whether it's just sitting in the morning and having a cup of coffee you know, join me for a cup of coffee. That's wonderful. And then don't feel guilty about it. You know, as long as you get your things done that you have to do, who cares if you're not Speedy Gonzales and you're a whirlwind? And We all, not all, but a lot of us suffer from like a busyness syndrome where we feel like we always have to be busy, we always have to be productive. And our society is notorious for propagating that thinking. And, and it's just, it's not healthy and it's not good. We don't need to be busy 24-7, or at least 
12, 7, you know, if we sleep. Or some of us don't even sleep much because of that. You know, oh, I've got too much to do. I can't sleep. I never used to take naps when I was younger. First of all, because I was never tired. You know, I had a lot of energy. I got things done. It wasn't always like a whirlwind, but things got done. Now, I love taking a nap, even if it's just a little cat nap in the afternoon with my cup of coffee. I know that around 3 or 4 o'clock, it's a downtime for me, so I embrace it. You know, I, I'm not going to sit there and look around and go, oh God, look at that, I need to do that, I need to do that. Clear your mind, get all those cobwebs and thoughts out of there, and enjoy the moment. Enjoy the nap or or the cup of coffee that you're going to have. Or, you know, just be present in the moment and, and stop overthinking and stop constantly thinking about the things you should be doing. And a lot of times, now I'm, I'm a single person. Well, you know, Tom and I, we He's my person, but we don't live together. We're not together 24-7, and that's the way we like it. I mean, we'll go on a vacation. We have a good time, but I think he and I are both only children, and we both enjoy our alone time. There's nothing wrong with that, but I pretty much can do what I want when I want and that's the way I like it. Same thing with him. So if you have a person, if your person is a critic, you need to sit them down and have a nice conversation with them. And, uh, you know, you don't have to do everything that everybody else wants. And then you take a back seat. And I know a lot of us, when we first start to do that, we feel very guilty and we feel very selfish. It's like, well, you know, I should be doing this for that person or that for that person. And of course they're going to go, yeah, that's great. Come on, bring it on. Bring me more, more, more. And there's a lot of people like that. They just have one hand out and it's to receive and it's not to give. And if you're in a relationship like that and you sit that person down and have a conversation with them and they just don't reciprocate, then maybe you need to rethink the relationship and take some steps to do self-care for yourself. I think that's very important and it's, it's really important for your happiness. If you're not happy with your life, something is wrong. Life isn't meant to be lived in drudgery, in servitude to other people. Um, it, it's just not meant to be that way. And even if you have a very humble home, you know, um, it's okay. Do things in your home to make it your, your place with your person, you know. And, and if it's pets, if you love pets, then get pets, you know, uh, as long as you can take care of them, it, it's, they're great companions, they love you no matter what, they don't care if you take your afternoon nap or have your afternoon cup of coffee, and if somebody that you live with is always making you feel guilty about the things you do, um, I don't know, you may want to rethink your relationship with that person. And actually, I'm speaking from experience because um, I've been married twice. I had a long-term relationship for 15 years with someone. And um, if it got to the point where I have to choose between my happiness and somebody else's happiness, even if I love that person. I'm going to choose my happiness because I'm, I'm in here 24-7. And even if you live with somebody, you're not in their 
choose 24-7. So that's not being selfish. And I'm not telling you to take your relationships and throw them all out the window. That's not what I'm saying. But you have to, it, it has to be a give-and-take situation. It has to be a compromise. It can't always be one person running the show and you're always tagging along and you're just not happy. So if you find yourself in a financial situation where you're just sort of stuck, Start taking small steps to get yourself unstuck. You know, if that means educating yourself, returning to school, doing a little bit of online learning. Even as seniors, you can, um, you can audit college classes. Um, you can learn new things. Maybe get a small part-time job if you're able. If you can't do that, learn about maybe making a little bit of money online. Start a YouTube channel. Um, investigate uh, things that you can do on your computer. I mean, nowadays people are making, some people are making money hand over fist. Uh, just doing jobs, sitting in their pajamas in their home on a computer. But there are ways, you know, do a little research and there are ways where you can start taking baby steps. It doesn't all have to be one big huge rock that falls on your head. You know, take those pebbles and put them in, in your garden of zen or whatever you want to call it. And start taking steps to make your life happy. And if the people around you don't like that, then they don't really care that much about you. Because don't you, as a, as a loving person, want to see the people around you that you love happy? And that doesn't mean you can make them happy. You can't. Nobody can make you happy. Maybe for a short term, you know, if somebody's nasty to you and then all of a sudden they're nice to you, yeah, that makes you happy. But what about all the times they're nasty to you? That, to me, that is selfish. Self-care is not selfish. So have those conversations with your loved ones, whether it's your children or your spouse or your significant other, your, your person, whatever you want to call them. And if they don't care enough about you and your happiness, then or you making yourself happy, then, you know, I think you need to rethink these things. Anyway, um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about that and um, take some steps to make yourself happy. If it's a walk in nature, a couple times a day to clear your head, it's like a walking meditation. I like to do that. I haven't done it in a very long time. I need to get back to it. I used to do it all the time, and it really does bring you peace. Or if it's meditating, setting up a little, a little corner that's just for you. Even if you have a very small living space, if you live in an efficiency apartment or wherever you live, there's always room in a little corner to light a few candles, you know, um, you can go there to pray, ask for guidance. That's what I do all the time. It's like a Jesus take the wheel kind of thing, you know, when I'm spinning and not knowing what to do, I just have to take a step back and literally that's what I do. You know, it's a Jesus take the wheel kind of thing. and. It can be whoever you, you know, if you don't believe in that, that's okay. You know, if it's the universe for you, put it out there in the universe and ask the universe to bring you what you need. Whatever it is, your faith will come from that. And you'll see start, things start to happen and you'll see little miracles taking place in your life that you never thought uh, would happen. But you have to take a deep breath, and that's another thing. You know, deep breathing and 
breathing in good good vibrations or whatever it is and just blowing out the bad and, and if you need to do that 20 times a day then do it 20 times a day just to calm yourself to to realign your thinking to realign your mind and it really really does work it's going to feel very very odd in the beginning there's a book I read years ago and it's called A Course in Miracles and it's it's sort of religious based in a way but even if you're not religious because I'm not religious I'm spiritual I've always been that way I don't go to church you know I don't worship that way the whole world is my church you know if I want to communicate with with God then it's I can do it anywhere in my backyard in my home um, but a Course in Miracles talks about every day you have an exercise and it sort of retrains your mind to look at things differently and it does feel really odd in the beginning um, I think if I recall one of the first exercises in there is just to sit in a chair and you look at things around you and you say this is not a loaf of bread this is not a plant and you just do that for a few few minutes and like I said it seems a little silly in the beginning but I really really enjoyed that book and it's it's a thick book let me show it to you okay here it is and I don't even remember where I got this um, there's there's an address here, it's Foundation for Inner Peace, Post Office Box 635, Tiburon, California, T-I-B-U-R-O-N, California, 94920. Now, back then, I've had this book probably for 30, 40 years. Back then, the book was $25. I don't know if you can get it at the library, but it's really a good course and it's something that it almost teaches you like a meditation type of thing and I know a lot of people that oh I can't meditate I'm just too hyper but that's the whole point of it to get you out of your own head and less hyper and less about what's going on in your head and it helps you see what's really going on around you excellent excellent book a Course in Miracles, Foundation for Inner Peace. It's a text workbook for students and a manual for teachers. There's at the back of the book is for teachers, um, and then the beginning of it is for students. So I just wanted to share that with you, and uh, maybe it'll be helpful. Uh, I know I really enjoyed it. And I'm thinking of doing it again um, because you do forget you know you get busy and then you start getting back in your own head and making your own misery a lot of times all right well I really hadn't planned on talking about that it just kind of flowed out of me so I hope that helps even if it helps one person um, that would be great so anyway, all right, I need to go make some breakfast and go spend some time with my mom. And uh, I'll be back in a little bit with breakfast. Breakfast, day 141. And I already know what I'm going to have. In case you're wondering, there's grapes in here. I need to take these off the off the vine and put them in my little saver, my grape saver. And um, but this morning I'm going to finally finish this last hard roll. That, those lasted for quite a while. I still have a lot of Walmart bread, a lot of my rye bread. That was really good yesterday with my homemade uh, Satan Deli. I still have a lot of eggs 
This is my yogurt that I made that <sighs> turned kind of funny. I really should get rid of that because I have a, a coconut yogurt that I bought that I need to make a new batch from. So, but anyway, I'm going to have an avoca avocado. <laughs> I have a viewer every time I say avocado. <laughs> she says, avocado. <laughs> so there you go. Avocado. I'm going to have this avocado. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to have some avocado toast. My onions still aren't ready. Uh, there's still that egg in there somewhere. So I'm going to give those another two or three days. So, okay, let's meet over at my stove. Here's my avocado that I'm going to make into avocado toast. And I just keep my um, my spice is simple. I have, uh, sometimes <laughs> I still have some of this breakfast blend. I don't think they make this flavor anymore, which I would totally buy another one of these, but I haven't even seen it online. But Blackstone makes a lot of different spices, and this lasted a couple years, but I'm not going to use that right now. What I use is uh, some lemon pepper, and this isn't homemade, but I just keep it in this little jar. So I'm hoping this uh, avocado is still good, and avocados have gotten so expensive. Used to be you could get them at Aldi's for like 59 cents, 69 cents. Oh, it's still good. And now they're uh, well, last time I saw them, they were 89 cents a piece, and I didn't get any because I still have some, but, um, yeah, they're, they're like 89 cents to a dollar a piece, so I just get the little ones, the young ones, because that's good enough. Um, well, this is starting to get a couple of little bad spots, but that's okay. I'll just take that out. Because I'm going to eat the whole thing. This thing is so small. Yeah, I think I can manage that. So all I do is mash it up. Put lemon pepper in there. Little extra pepper sometimes. You can put a little franks in there if you like a little heat. Um, I put a little garlic powder, onion powder in there, and that's it. Smash it up and stick it on my bread. Now I do like to eat a tomato slice on there, but right now I only have one tomato. So I'm going to save that for something else. And I'm just going to have the avocado on toast. So I've got my little roll in the uh, air fryer that does a good job just crisping it up. And one of my uh, subscribers said, because I had made a remark how small the pit is, and she said those are just baby avocados that they pick really early. So they must just ripen on their own. But, um, I don't know, we can't grow avocados here because it's too doggone cold for just about everything. But, there are people living in places that are even colder, so I'm not going to complain too much. Yep, time to have to get out in the garden, get a little bit done, because looking at all those empty grow boxes doesn't look real pretty. So, yeah, I've got two avocados left, and I need to start eating these so they don't go bad. 
All right. I will be back in a minute when my roll is done. Okay, well, I'm going to... This is ready because this has a uh, lemon peel in it. Sometimes it cakes up. But no worries. I just take off what I need. There we go. And a little bit of onion powder. Now in here I have you know those things sometimes that you get with pills? The um, oxygen absorbers? I just stick that in here. And it keeps this from clumping. And I need another one for in here, obviously. And a little garlic powder. And if you like your guacamole a little more limey, stick in a little lime juice, but this is good enough for me. And got my avocado banana smasher. So that's it. And that's all I'm going to have for breakfast this morning. That and my lovely cup of coffee. And what do you guys like to have for breakfast? Are you a traditional cereal and, and milk person, or um, yeah, what do you like to eat for breakfast? I, you know, to me, my favorite thing is a sandwich or something like this. I very rarely eat cereal. Um, I don't know, I just, it doesn't satisfy me. Um, and I very rarely eat oatmeal. I'll, I'll do oat milk and have oat milk yogurt. But I don't, I've never really been a milk drinker, even when I did dairy milk. And I don't use a lot of dairy products. I mean, I do eat cheese. And I even got away from that for a while. And I was into the vegan cheeses, which, meh. They're not the best, but they don't have really any protein. You know, when I realized they're just really mostly fat, um, I kind of went back to the dairy cheese a little bit. And please don't leave comments about the baby cows. I know it's her, her, it's horrific. You know, I, I really, there are some things in this world that I wish I could change, but I can't. But I'm, I try not to eat too, too much cheese because of uh, cholesterol. Now, cheese does have a lot of fat and cholesterol, too, but at least it has a little protein. So I, I kind of uh, went back to the dairy cheese, but I really don't use regular milk. I'll use plant-based milks. So let me give this a try. Could use a little tiny bit of garlic salt, not much, because it's almost there. And I'm going to add a little bit more pepper. Boy, I'll tell you, these pepper things from Dollar Tree last forever. Well, they're $1.25 now, obviously, so you might be able to get it cheaper at Walmart. I don't know. But anyway, I have a lot of pepper, a lot of pepper mills. Of course I do, because it's Ellen's abundant life. All right, so there we have it. There's my roll, and this is it. This is breakfast. And this is a really tiny roll, so I'm thinking I'm not going to use all this. I'll have it later on, maybe for dinner. I don't know. We'll see. I was thinking about maybe making a stir-fry, but it depends on what time I get back 
And sometimes when I go to my mom, she likes to go have a bite to eat with me. Or we'll have a pizza. So I don't know what today's going to bring. Very plain breakfast this morning. Avocado toast. Well, avocado roll. And that's it. All right, I will be back sometime this afternoon or this evening and show you what's for dinner, if there is dinner, or wrap things up. All right, quick, see you later. I wanted to let you know that if you're making your avocado, a really good thing to put on top of it is this everything bagel. And I know the Dollar Tree has it. I don't know if somebody else has it cheaper. But just sprinkling some of that on the top is really, really good. All right, so everything bagel and avocado. For dinner, day 141. So let's see what's going to be cooking. The alarm. Okay, let's see. Um... I have a little bit of the guacamole. I'm going to save that for breakfast. This is the rice I made yesterday. And my mom wanted to go to breakfast, so I just had some cinnamon pancakes. So I'll eat that for breakfast maybe tomorrow. But I have still all these veggies. So, in here I have uh, peppers. These are cauliflower. I need to cook that up. So that needs to get cooked. I still have these peppers and they're still fine. Back here I have Brussels sprouts, and those are, I got those in that veggie box, so I need to cook those up. And I have a cabbage here. Oh boy, these peppers need to, need to have something done with them. They're still good. But I have this cabbage here yet that I want to make too. So I'm just going to, oh, you know, I'm going to make a vegetable medley. I've got a little bit of celery that I need to cook up. And let's see what else. Uh, I want to cook up a carrot. All right. I will meet I you at the cut stove. up my veggies. I have Brussels sprouts that are still beautiful. And I got this veggie box for five dollars um, probably a good week and a half ago, going on two weeks. And they were really big Brussels sprouts. I cut them in half. It had Brussels sprouts, it had a beautiful cauliflower in it. I'm definitely going to get that again when they have it available. And I even shared it with my mother. So I'm just going to do a vegetable medley because I do want to cook these things. And I'm laughing because my dogs actually like the Brussels sprouts. So I was going to give it all to my worms, but I'll give some to my puppies first. You know, just the outside leaves. So here it is and I'm making this in my microwave cooker and I think I have this Asian seasoning that I've had for a long time sweet ginger garlic I don't even remember where I got it probably Walmart because um, that's usually I shop at Walmart all these or marks. So I got it at one of those three stores. So I'm going to sprinkle some of that on here. 
because today I'm going to have it as an, uh, a, like an Asian stir-fry-ish kind of thing. But I'm not going to eat all these veggies in one sitting, so tonight I'll have it with rice, and I don't know what I'll have it with tomorrow, but I want to cook these up before they do go bad, but they're still in beautiful shape. This is just a little garlic salt. And then I'm just going to steam these for five or six minutes. I don't know how long exactly it's going to take uh, for them to be done. And then I'm going to have them with my rice. And I have some sauces in the refrigerator um, that I'm going to use. So, uh... I think I'll use some of this complete seasoning on here too. All right, there we go. I'm going to toss these a little bit. All right. And in it goes. All right, so I'll be back once these are cooked. Okay, I heated up the basmati rice that I seasoned yesterday. Put a little tiny pat of butter on there just to give it a little richer flavor. My veggies are nicely steamed. And I'm just going to pick out some of them. And they're crisp tender. You can cook them as, as done as you like. I like this microwave steamer. I don't know if you can still get something similar. I've had it for years. But um, I only want to eat half of this. And the other half I'm going to save for another meal. Because as I said, I don't want to overeat. And sometimes we all tend to eat a little bit too much. So in here I've got celery and carrots and a small pepper. I will eat the whole pepper because it was just a mini pepper. So, um, and then I'm going to put some of this mandarin sauce over it. All right, I think that's good. Save the rest for another meal. And this is a good way to stretch your food dollar, too. Not that you should go hungry. That's not good, but don't overeat. So I have this uh, Panda Express Mandarin sauce that I'm going to pour over here. Now, I don't have any meat in here or any tofu, but you could totally add tofu to this. You could add seitan. I actually cut a couple pieces of seitan from my deli loaf that I made yesterday. And I ate a couple pieces cold, because I like it cold. I'm just going to heat this, up, this sauce up for just a few seconds, because everything else in here is really hot. Okay, so you could add cashews to this, you could add peanuts to it, you could add all sorts of things to it. So if you have a lot of random vegetables, just steam them up in an Instapot or in a steamer, whatever you have. Put a little sauce on it, maybe a little rice. This would also be good with pasta. Um, you can make it uh, like with udon noodles or pretty much anything. So, all right, there's dinner, day 141. I'm going to enjoy this. And in the meantime, you know the drill. I want to wish you abundant blessings. I love you guys. Be good to yourself. Be good to others. God bless you, and I'll see you next time. 
If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, comment, and like. Thanks for watching!